please as many as are on the call that can turn on their video it would be nice to get to know the faces again some of you have not seen you in two years Misha, it was really nice seeing you. Awesome, you look great. All right, brother Timmy, awesome. Good, Deji. Oh, Deji. Deji is in my actually uh, youth church. And Tutu, oh my goodness, I've not seen these folks since March. All right, awesome. So we are in for a great time tonight. Tosin, how are you? Paul, great to see you. Esther, Christina, I guess the uh, Esther and uh, uh, Chris Ben and the kids are there. Uh, Isaac. Uh, all right, so that was fun game, and we thank God for that. So real quick, because we are time constrained, we are only giving an hour. Imagine giving you church just an hour. We have not even warmed up, you know, but God is in control. He's going to help us tonight. Let's say a quick word of prayer, and we'll get right into the word. I'm going to need you guys' help to read the Bible, so get your Bible apps beside you. If you're using the physical Bible, as soon as we can, we'll get into the word. Uh, as soon as I call out the scriptures, I want whoever who can get it to me fastest. All right, let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this opportunity to dine at your table. Thank you for this great feast called 2020 North American Convention for Jubilee Christian Church. We are grateful for the youth session. Father, thank you because you said the glory of youth is their strength. Thank you because we are strong, we are powerful, we are the future, and we give you praise and glory for bringing us together from all the different branches and all over the world to come together this evening to fellowship with you, to learn at your feet. Holy Spirit, we yield to you right now. Come and teach your word through me. Come and answer questions in our heart. Come and give us insight into the plan and purpose of God. Let us learn something new. Let us uh, allow your word to go straight in our heart. Let us receive of you tonight in the name of Jesus. And we pray that will not be hearers only, but will be doers of the word. We will act on what we heard today. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. All right. Um, I will need to share my screen, so I need the host to give me permission. So what we are going to be looking at this afternoon, it's a very simple topic. And every believer, if you've given your life to Christ, that means you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You are a believer. You are a child of God. That has given you access to the full plan and purpose of God for your life. And part of God's plan for your life is for you to have help. Amen. For you to have help. Every one of us, no matter how old, how strong, how tall, how knowledgeable, how smart that we are, at one point or the other in our lives, we're going to need help. Amen. Somebody say help. Yeah. I know we're all oh. muted. I like participation. So just be ready. Your fingers have to be moving. Amen. So somebody say help. Help. All right. I'm sure at one point or the other, let me say today, some of you must have used that help word today or in the last one month. Or in the last one year, you have asked somebody for help or somebody to help you do something. Yeah. Can you help me with a bottle of water and things like that? Amen. Hallelujah. So we are looking today as, uh, uh, we are looking at today's uh, topic as our very present help. That means there is a help that is available for you as a child of God that is always available, always accessible to you, no matter the situation. Amen. Hallelujah. Very present help. Very present help. So we're going to go into the scriptures as we started out this afternoon. Let's open to Psalm 46. Somebody read for me. Um, Brother Folabi, I need to share my screen. Thank you. If you are there. Just... Okay. Yeah. Uh... Psalm 46 verse 1. And two, if somebody is there, read for me, please. God is our refuge and strength, uh -huh. a very present help in trouble. Woo! Therefore, Can you read that again a little louder? Can you get to your uh, 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 mic? I want everybody to hear so that I won't be Pastor this is what's saying something. I want you to be a bit louder. Go ahead. God is our refuge and strength. Mm -hmm. A very present help in trouble. 
a very present help in what? Trouble. 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 Awesome. A very present help. So we've seen God identifying himself with one particular characteristic that he, God, is a very present help. Hallelujah. How would you like it if you need help and the help is not present? Is it worth anything to you? No. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. But God is declaring himself to be in a category of his own, that I'm a very present help. I'm not just a help, but I'm very present. That means right when you need it, I'm going to show up for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So God is defining himself right from the start. I'm a very present help. He now puts us, he now defines it in trouble. But is it only when we are in trouble that we need help? No. Awesome. No. So God can be very present help even when we are not in trouble. Maybe you, want, you just need a hand to get something done. Or you need favor. Or you need answered prayer. Or you need a connection or a network to get to another level of life. Or you feel ill in your body. I need to, be, to, 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 to recover and to be healed. You still need help. Most of us go to the doctor because we need help to recover from sickness or an infection or, or disease, right? But God is saying, I am your very present help. So in trouble, even when you are not in trouble, hallelujah, glory to God. Read verse two and we'll move on to another scripture. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Hallelujah. He said, one thing about knowing that God is your help, guys, everyone on, to, on the call tonight, one thing you need to know, when you know and you are assured and you believe that God is your very present help, he said, therefore, we will not fear. Anytime you sense fear, it shows that you have forgotten that there is a help that you have in God. Amen. Because anytime you remember that you have a very present help in God, then you should be able to resist fear because there is help for you in that situation. Hallelujah. Amen. A very present help in trouble. And he said, therefore, we will not fear. So because it's your very, God is your very present help, that is why, that is one of the reasons you should not allow fear to rule in your life. You should not allow fear to reign in your life. Hallelujah. Are you getting me this afternoon? Yes. Glory to God. Yeah. So it's a very present help in trouble. Amen. Amen. So, like I said earlier, from time to time, we all run into trouble. Either we cause the trouble ourselves or trouble just shows up on our doorstep. It doesn't mean you get in trouble because you are a bad person. No. Trouble comes with what is called life. Amen. You know, the Bible says that in... Uh, um, in, in Matthew 25, when he was talking about seeking for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added to you. He said, um, every day, he was talking about that every day has its own trouble, you know? So trouble comes with the fact that you are alive, not because of what you do or what you do. Of course, some of us, we look for trouble. <laughs> we look for it and we get into it. We step big time into it. But even at that, God he has still committed himself to you and to me. That even when we cause the trouble, he's still going to show up to deliver us. Trouble could be little. It could be great. Have you ever been in trouble? Anybody on this call, have you ever been in trouble? Can you, can you confirm with me if you have been in trouble before? Yes. Yes, I have been in trouble. The one I caused and the one that just showed up on my doorstep. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to see our very present God. That is our present help. Amen. Um, okay, let's, let's move to my next slide. Let's look at a few examples of people in the Bible that have actually gotten into trouble. We'll look at people that trouble just showed up and some people, they caused the trouble. But because of our time, okay. Somebody read, open for me, Daniel chapter 6. We're going to read, maybe just pick a few, 11 to 22. Another person, Jonah, the book of Jonah, chapter 1, somebody 
book of Jonah chapter 2. We do 1 to 2 and verse 10. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to show you that God is not afraid to help you. No matter the size of the trouble, no matter whether you caused the trouble or you didn't, he is always there for you. He cares for you. If he could give his only begotten son, Jesus, to die for you. In Romans chapter 8, the Bible says, how much more will he with him freely give you all things? So God is committing himself to freely give you the help that you need. Hallelujah. Anybody in Daniel 6 real quick? Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. So they okay, went. What did Daniel do? Asked for help. Daniel was praying and asking and God for help. help. So one of the ways to get help from God is to do what? Pray. Awesome. I, I love that answer. Pray. If you don't pray, that means you are too proud to ask God for help. So one of the ways to get help from God is to pray. It could be Five second prayer, Lord help me in this exam I'm about to take. God give me favor before this person that's going to interview me for this job or for this scholarship. Amen. So Amen. never feel too big. Never feel there is no time to ask God for help. So we see an example in Daniel. He prayed to do what? Ask God for help. Your whole prayer point will be help me God. It can be. And he will help you. Because we saw in Psalm 46 that he's a very present help. He's committed to help. In fact, he's looking for who to help. Amen. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Continue, sir. So they went to the king and spoke to him about his royal decree. Did you not publish a decree that during the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any god, any god or human being except to you, your majesty, would be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, the decree stands in accordance with the law of Medes and the Persians, which cannot be repealed. Then they said to the king, Daniel, who is one, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, your majesty, or to the decree you put in writing. He still prays three times a day. Wow. When, the king, when the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He was determined to rescue Daniel and made every effort until sundown to save him. Hold on one second. Did you hear that? The king made people connive together. They made the king to sign a decree that cannot be changed. Unfortunately, Daniel was the person that they were setting the trap for. Daniel did not mind. He stepped right into that trap. Right? He prayed three times a day to ask God for help. And they found him out. And they took him, judged him, and found him guilty. And look at what I want you to notice. Why is this topic very important today? We all need help. Even our world needs help. The country we are in needs help. The whole nation of the world is going through turmoil right now. They need help. The best of our effort to get help from somewhere else may always fail us. Look at that, that verse. What was the verse you read last? Who is reading when, for me? When the name? king, Deborah. Huh? Who is reading for me? Deborah. Deborah. What? I just want the verse. What verse is that? Just don't read it. Just say, mention the verse. Verse 14. Verse 14. Everyone look at verse 14. He said, the king tried all he could despite his best effort to get Daniel out of that trouble. But what happened, Deborah? Then the men went as a group to King Darius and said to him, oh, Hold up. I want you to answer that verse 14. The king tried to help Daniel, but what happened? Was he able to help him? Uh, that verse 14 says the answer. I just wanted you to emphasize it. Or read verse 14 again. Maybe that will help. You. When the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He, determined, he was determined to rescue Daniel and made every effort until sundown to save him. But he could not. That's what I was trying to say. He made every effort. So sometimes when we are looking for help from people, from man, it does not work. Because man doesn't have all the capability or capacity or ability to help us. Guys, so whenever there is any time or anything that shows up on your doorstep and you need help, 
Think of God first. What did I say? Think of God first. God first. Awesome. Even if God is going to use a human being to help you, talk to God first so that God can touch the heart of that human being, provide the resources for them to be able to help you. But most of us, we ask the human being first and they let us down. Sometimes because they couldn't, but sometimes just because they don't want to. Amen. But I wanted you to notice that the king tried all he could to save Daniel. He said from till, until sundown, but he could not. All right, continue that scripture real quick. Then the men went as a group to King Darius and said to him, Remember, your majesty, that according to the law of the, of the Medes and Persians, no decree or edict that the king issues can be changed. Yeah. So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. Woo! The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve, continually rescue you. Amen. A stone was, was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Ooh. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought to him, and he could not sleep. At, at the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came... When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, may the, ki may the king live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Hallelujah. Did you all see that? That was big trouble. If you want to define big trouble, that was it. But for, for somebody to throw you into the den of the lion, you did not have a choice. They even tried to save you out of it. But the law was so strong, they could not change it. They sealed the door of the lion's den with stone and put signet in it. That means this cannot be reversed. But we thank God, a very present help. Daniel prayed to that God, hallelujah. And you know how God did it? He showed up for him. Right there, at the most difficult time, in the night hour, in the midnight time, where he had almost thought that there was no way, hallelujah, God showed up. So guys, no matter what you are going through, no matter what life throws at you, no matter what shows up, you might have done an exam and you felt, oh, I failed this paper. Don't give up. Ask God for help. God can show up, touch the heart of your teachers, and they give like, bump everybody up by five points. And that takes you over the uh, pass mark or whatever grade you need. Amen. So never count God's help out, no matter how difficult or hopeless the situation is. All right, who is reading for me? Jonah chapter 1, 15 to 17. I am. Go ahead, please. Help me read loudly so that everybody can hear. And if you are not speaking, please mute. Thank you. It says, then, then they took Jonah and threw him overboard. And the raging sea grew calm. 16. And at this, the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. Okay. Now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly for um, the belly of the fish three days and three nights. All right, let's recap on that. Jonah disobeyed God. So the first example we looked at was somebody that trouble just showed up on his doorstep. They wanted him to do something contrary to the word of God or will of God. He said, no, I'm going to ask God for help, no matter what the situation is. And they set him up and put him in trouble. And God saved him. This second example is somebody that God told him what to do. He chose to disobey God. Then he ran into trouble. What was the trouble? He, he ran into a boat, going to another town that God did not send him to. And there was so much hurricane and storm. And, you know, in their belief, they believed that somebody had done something wrong. That's why the, the sea was in that much uproar. So the sacrifice to the sea was to throw somebody aboard. 
So jo Jonah said, don't destroy the goods or anybody else on this boat. I'm the reason. I'm the one who disobeyed God. I'm the one that brought this struggle. You know what you should do? Throw me overboard. That was another big struggle. Jonah was thrown overboard, and God sent a big fish. I, I will assume it's a whale. The Bible didn't tell us. And that whale swallowed Jonah. Imagine what it is to be inside of a fish. It's going to be dark, smelly, slimy. Woo! I don't even want to. Mm -mm. Amen. But Jonah was there. That was serious because all the digestive enzymes were going to be like acting on him, acid and such, because that's how it works. Digestive enzymes and all the acid were going to just start chewing out and, and causing his, his flesh to begin to rot and break down. But what happened? I want you to see somebody that caused his own problem, that got into his own situation by his own disobedience. God did not cast him out. Let's look at Jonah chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, real quick. Somebody, Jonah chapter 2. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God from inside the fish. He said, I cried what out did to Jonah the Lord. Do? What did Jonah do? He prayed to the Lord. From where? From inside the fish. Can you imagine? Inside the situation he put himself into, he did not say, oh man, I'm too depressed, I'm condemned. No, he still prayed to God from inside the situation, inside the belly of the fish. Hmm. He did that. So please, no matter what the situation is, don't be afraid to ask God for help. You may not know how the help is going to come, but still take that step of faith and ask him for help. Remember Psalm 46 verse 1 says, he's a very present help in trouble. Hallelujah. Please, we are, in, we, are, we, are, we are in uncertain times in our world. Please always ask God for help. Amen. Continue, sir. Amen. Verse yeah. 2. Okay. He said, I cried out to the Lord in my great trouble, and he answered me. I called to you from the land of the dead, and Lord, you heard me. Okay. Thank you. God heard him from the land of the dead. That means if you are in the belly of a whale, you are gone. I'm telling you. <laughs> Just forget it. The depth of the water alone and also the inside of the whale with all the acid and digestive enzyme, forget it. So he knew he had no chance. He was suffocating, I guess, because he couldn't breathe. There's no oxygen there. It's like oh, anaerobic environment, whatever. He cried out to God in that situation. And God showed up. Now let's look at verse 10. Let's see what God did. How the help, you see, you are not in control of how God helps you. All you, your part is to ask God for that help and see what he does. Go ahead. Verse 10, please. Okay. Then the Lord ordered the fish to spit Jonah out onto the beach. What did God do? He ordered the fish. He ordered the Jonah fish. Out. Isn't that amazing? How would you have thought of all the ways God, to, God could send help? He just spoke to the fish. All right, fish is enough. Have a belly ache and get him out. <laughs> oh, our God is amazing. I just yeah. love the God we serve. It's awesome God. He makes things fun, even when he's trying to help you out of the trouble you create. Amen. So read, Amen. let's round that. Read that verse again and let's round it up. Okay. Then the Lord ordered the fish to speed Jonah out onto the beach. That was the end. Yeah, that's that's it. Okay, first all right. Ten. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, thank you. You see, so I wanted you to see that even somebody got into trouble, and God showed up. The other person trouble showed up on his doorstep. He cried for help, and God showed up. Let's. Do, I won't look at. You can go to the, uh, First Chronicles and look at the story of Jehoshaphat. How three nations came to fight him: children of Ammon, Mount Seir, and the other nation. And he asked God for help. And God said, you will not need to fight in this battle. You know, I'm going to take control. And God fought the three nations. They, they fought each other, helped destroy each other. So that by the time Joseph had got to the war, war front, everybody was dead. <laughs> Amen. So the help of God is awesome. Hallelujah. But your Amen. part is you always have to acknowledge that he's available and you have to ask him. So let's look at Hebrews 13, 5. 5 to 6, actually. Hebrews 13, 5 to 6. I'm sorry I'm rushing a little bit because I want us to get the full context so that we can pray. And if there's any question, we'll, we'll quickly take it. So I may not finish all my slides, but at least I want us to get us to a place where you can begin to live your life with the knowledge that help is always available to you. No matter how small, 
You want to pick a shoe to buy online, Lord, help me to pick the right one. You don't want one that you will now, you know, you want to order food at the restaurant, you, you know, always ask for help. Amen. The help Amen. of God is the best and it's always available. That's all I want to, to communicate to you this afternoon. And if you get that and use it for the rest of your life, your life will not remain the same. You will enjoy the help of God at another level. Amen. All right. Amen. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Somebody. Anybody helping me out? Trying to save time. Um, don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So you can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. So I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Amen. Look at that. He said, God says, for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That is why the help of God is ever present. That is another promise. I will never leave you nor forsake you. In Psalm 46, he told us that it's a very present help in trouble. So if somebody is with you and he never leaves you nor forsake you, you now see how his help is ever present because the person is always with you. He knows when you are in trouble. He knows when you need help, but he will not struggle to help you. You have to reach out to him for his help to be manifested. You know why that is? Because it's a spiritual law. Matthew 7, 7, don't hope, you can write it down, but you don't need to open it. It said, ask and it shall be given unto you. So if you don't ask, you are not setting the principle in motion for you to receive. So whether you need shoe, money, food, or help, you have to ask for it. Amen. Amen. So God is telling us, he will never leave you nor forsake you, that you may boldly say, is the purpose of him being with you, never leaving you, never forsaking you, is so that you can say, the Lord is my help. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? He's always there to help you. He's always there to help you. That is why he doesn't want to sleep or slumber because you might need help when he dozes off. No, Bible says that he that keepeth Israel neither sleeps nor slumber. You begin to see the character of God as far as you are concerned. He's committed to you. Please don't despise his help, but you have to always ask for it. Amen. Because he's Amen. there for you is there all the time to help you. He said that you may boldly say, look at that, that, that verse, if you can underline or highlight your, your phone, just click on the highlight and underline it and whatever, write it down. He said that you may boldly say, not me, oh, God will help me. No, boldly, God is going to help me. Amen. That you may Amen. boldly say, the Lord is my help. You will not fear. Again, it's showing that whenever you know God is your help, fear don't have any place. Amen. Amen. So anytime you feel afraid, Call to mind that you have a help in God that can get you out of this situation or that situation. And I'm talking generally, but look at your own life. Help is not only when you are in trouble. You may want to carry a chair from one place to the other. We need help, right? So anything you are doing that needs assistance in whatever way, form, or fashion is help. And you can ask God to help you. Even if God now is going to point you to a particular man, a woman, a boy, or a girl to do the help, at least you are acknowledging the fact that God can go ahead of you to get the help you need. Amen. So look, in every situation that we looked at, this, the case of uh, Jehoshaphat, the case of Jonah, and the case of, um, of Daniel, right? They cried to God and he showed up to help. Can we conclude that? How does help come? I'm looking at time and I'm trying to get it in. In all these cases, we noted the people ask for help. We've already talked about that. Two, you have to believe in the ability of the help. Right? Okay, let's look at a scenario now. Maybe, um, let's say I'm 150 pounds and somebody showed up, wants to beat me up, is 250 pounds. Huge, muscular guy. And now, I now have like a five-year-old boy that is like 20 pounds or I don't know what, how, what five-year-old weigh. Do you know, I can't ask the five-year-old for help. Even if I ask him for help, I would doubt his ability, right? Maybe he can only buy the guy by the feet, but he can carry me and the 20 year five-year-old guy because he's 250 pounds. What am I saying? 
for you to be able to enjoy help, believe in the ability of the help. And we already showcased our, the ability of the God that we serve. Amen. The God that is your father that has promised you this help, right? So he's saying, I will not leave you nor forsake you. He said, I'm a very present help in trouble. He's giving his own attributes. So to get help, we're looking now at how does help come. You ask for the help. Number two, you have to believe in the ability of the help. You have to believe that God has the capacity. He loves you and he has your interest in heart to be able to provide the help. Then you have to also know that the help is available. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That means his help is always available 24-7 then you have to expect it. Immediately you ask for help, begin to expect it. You will not know how the help will show up. When Daniel had for help, he didn't know that God was going to help him by blocking the mouth of the lion. When Jonah asked for help, he didn't know that God was going to ask the whale to spew him out. So the help of God, you cannot decide how it's going to happen. But just know that it's going to happen. Hallelujah. So for you... Under the sound of my voice this afternoon, the help of God is always available for you, 24-7. Whether it's the night, in the morning, in the afternoon, in school, at work, at games. Some of you are on, 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 on different teams playing sports. You can ask God for help for your team. Amen. And expect God to help you. Hallelujah. Let's Amen. go. I hope you are getting blessed this afternoon. Look at yeah. Psalm 91, verse 14 to 15. Because of time... Ah, I would like us to read it. Somebody open to Psalm 91, but I will share the, the points and then we'll just look at it. He said, you have the responsibility, that's what I've been emphasizing, you have the responsibility to call on God and God's responsibility is to deliver you or to provide the help. So the, there is a partnership. If you don't call on him for help, then you don't believe in his ability. And after you have called on him, then expect him to do his own part to make the help available. Is somebody there in that Psalm 91 real quick? They, they will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He's my rock. That's not the, check, the, check what you are reading, Psalm 91. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, so because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will All right. Him, for he acknowledges my name. He will, call, he will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Amen. Did you see that? God said, because he loves me, I will do this and that. And I said, he will call upon me. Who is going to call upon God? You and I. That is our responsibility to call on him to ask for the type of help we need. And what is his own part? I will answer him. So you don't call on, on God and answer yourself. No, you call on him and God answers. Amen. Yes. Guys, are you getting it? Yes. Yeah. You call on him. That is your part. If you don't call on him or you are afraid and call on him and not sure whether he will help you, then you may not get the help. Because the Bible says that uh, either wavers is like um, a wave of the sea. You know, it's like a, something that the wind is blowing. You, you, have, to, when you, ask, you have to ask God in faith. He was talking in James chapter 1 about wisdom, but you can apply it in this circumstance when you ask him for help. Don't waver when you ask God for help. Be sure it's going to make the help available. The help might come in form of an idea for an idea of what you should do next. Maybe you want to take a decision in life. Maybe you're at the point of getting married or choosing somebody to marry. Lord, should I choose A or B? Ask God for help. Don't just rush because the person is told that can answer or if the person is, is, is hot and it's is, is a, is a 10. That don't pay bills. That don't, that don't help you with your work with God. That's all the world standard. And it's not going to fly in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So ask God for help when you are in, taking a decision. Two jobs show up. You, you apply for several jobs and two jobs show, showed up and asking you uh, to, to, to choose them. You know, you got two offers for job. Lord, I ask you to help me to choose the best job for me at this point of my life. And let God help you. He will show you things that will help you to make that decision. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, now, we saw how God helped people in the Old Testament. But there's a new way he's helping us in the New Testament. And that is John 14, 26, John 16, 7 to 3, 17, 7 to 7 and 13. God, Jesus, when he was on earth, he was going away. And he was telling his disciples that I'm going to a place 
where I'm going, you will come and join me later, but now you can't go and all that. He said, but I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So John 14, verse 26, particularly if somebody has a New King James, real quick. John 14, 26, John 16, if you, whichever one you find first, we can read. The Holy Spirit is our help in this new testament, in this new dispensation. God has put the help, you know, he told us he will never leave us nor forsake us. The fulfillment of that word is him putting the Holy Spirit in you. If you've given your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit is already in you. Hallelujah. And the purpose of the Holy Spirit in your life is to be your help. Now, somebody, John 14, 26, New King James. But the help of the Holy Spirit. But what? The helper, the Holy Spirit. Who is the helper? The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I said, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, continue. Whom the Father will send in my name. Whom the Father, who has been the help in the Old Testament, the Father. But in this New Testament, he now sent Jesus, and Jesus was now living after he had helped the disciples for three years. He was now saying, I'm going to be going, but I'm going to give you another comforter, another helper, because he was a help to them to know God. So he was going away and said, I'm, I'm going to give you another helper. The Holy Spirit is the helper. Somebody shout hallelujah. Woo! Glory hallelujah. to God. Yeah. So if you have the Holy Spirit, glory to God. Thank you for that. You have a helper. You carry him on the inside of you. So you don't have to look out for help. You look inside. The Holy Spirit is your helper. Now, continue to read that particular verse for me. He will teach you all things and bring He you will teach you all things. And what else? Bring to your remembrance. Oh, th uh, thank you. Sorry, I'm cutting you. I'm just so excited. Okay. This scripture, I used it a lot in school. As a student, I know some of us are not students here. Even on your job, you are in IT, you need to write a code. The Holy Spirit can teach you the code. It can bring you to remember some certain shortcuts or uh, plugins that you can do to get the job done. You are a doctor, you need to diagnose a patient. Holy Spirit, help me. What is going on with this patient? You will know. You are in medical, so you need to remember a whole book, a whole textbook. I mean, I've been there. He will help you. I know this scripture. Say, he will teach. And finance. Whatever you are you're studying, anyway. Amen. Teaching is teaching. Amen. Even as a husband, when you get married, you want to know how to hang a picture on the wall. Holy Spirit, teach me. He will show you not to put the nail in the sheet rock, but to put it on a stud. You know? <laughs> I'm just saying, help. You want to do your yard. You don't even know where to turn on the lawnmower. Ask the Holy Spirit for help. Some of you that are learning to drive, Holy Spirit, help me. Teach me how to drive. He will teach you. Not that you will hear a voice. No, that's not what I mean. But the help will be available that you will know this is God helping me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. God's help is available in any way, in any form, in any fashion. Your responsibility is not to determine how the help will come. Your responsibility is to ask for the help. Believe in the ability of the help. Expect the help and enjoy it. I like that part. Enjoy the help. Amen. I've been enjoying God's help. Oh my goodness, you don't know. Even in any way, you have pimples, it's bothering you. Ask God to help you. <laughs> you are sick, you have a condition, the doctor has said this. Don't believe them. Ask God to help you and heal you. It's he said by his stripes, you were healed. Lord, how can this healing manifest in my body? You told me I've been mm -hmm. healed. Lord, I need this healing to manifest. Ask him for help. And this is a beauty. He said, We have the Holy Spirit in us. He will teach you all things. He will help you remember all things. How do you know? How do you think I'm remembering all the scriptures I'm telling you? It's the Holy Spirit. It's just bringing it out of me so fast that I'm, as fast as I can say them. Amen. Why? Amen. Because he wants you to get to believe in his help. So, young people, on this call this afternoon, you are in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. The help of God is available for you. The help of God in this New Testament for our generation in this dispensation is in the Holy Spirit. Don't spend all your time on social media imbibing and taking in all the lies, all the falseness, all the fear. No! Don't stay on TV taking in all the nonsense. Stay with the Word of God and see all manner of ways he has helped people in the past so that he can help you to believe
that when you need help, he's going to show up for you. Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by God's word. If you don't spend time enough with the God that is your help, you will not believe him that he will help you when you need it. Is that true or false? True. Exactly. Thank you, Timmy. So when you spend time with the word, when you spend time with the word, Bible says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. So when you want to spend time with the word of God, you are spending time with God. And who is God? Is your very present help. So you begin to see the different ways he has helped people. Then when you need help, the only thing will bring to your remembrance his ability that he helped Samson in this situation. He helped David in that situation to kill Goliath. He helped uh, 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 Jesus in that situation. He helped Peter when he needed to, 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 to fish. He, he went all night, he caught nothing. And God, Jesus told him, cast your net on the other side. Any way that help is needed, you can count on him. But you need to believe in his help by going to the word, spending time with his word. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So before I round up now, I just want to pray for us. But there are some of us here. You see, the help of God can multiply in your life. He said, he gave them the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going away. I'll give you another comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, and he will do this and that. The first encounter with the Holy Spirit is when you give your life to Christ. When you get born again, the Holy Spirit comes into you as a child of God. It's your seal for sal of salvation. It's your seal of redemption. It's like God has just stamped you that you belong to him. You can't get born again without the Holy Spirit, right? Then, after you have been born again, there's another encounter with the Holy Spirit that every believer needs. Particularly, um, every believer needs that encounter. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry, I, I, I just was checking on the time. Okay. And that is the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus told them when he rose up again in the book of Acts chapter 1. He said, do not leave Jerusalem until you get the promise of the Father. And that is the Holy Spirit which he promised. And in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says on the day of Pentecost, right? What happened? He said there was sound of like rushing mighty wind. And there appeared to land upon each of the uh, disciples, 120 of them in the upper room, clothing tongues as of fire. And the Bible says... And they began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. So one of the ways to enjoy the help of God is to be filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Glory Amen. to God. So first of all, if you are on this call this afternoon and you have not given your life to Christ, I'm just going to end my slide now. Let's, let's do real business. If you have not given your life to Christ, we can settle that today. You can become a child of God and have access to this help. Without being a child of God, uh, the help you can get is limited to the help available to his creation. That is a class of help. There's another level of help that it belongs to his own children, which is who you become when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So if you have not done that, real quick, I'm just going to pray with us. I want to put your hand on your chest and follow me as I pray. In Romans chapter 10, it says, with the heart man believeth, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So we're going to Declare our belief in Jesus and confess that Jesus, uh, God raised him from the dead and we are saved. That's what the Bible says in Romans 10. You can read that later. So, so if you are one of those people, you can click on your chat box uh, on your, on, on your, and put your hands up. It's a blue sign like this. So it will help me know and connect with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for everyone that heard your message this afternoon. But adventure, some of them have not surrendered to you. They have not formally accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Oh, of course, they've been going to church. They've been following their parents. They've been hanging with their friends, hanging around church. But they have not become your child or your daughter or your son. Father, we pray for them right now as they, in faith, want to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you accept them, O oh God. Forgive them all their sins and, uh, uh, and let them have eternal life. In Christ Jesus, amen. So I want you to say after me, Heavenly Father, Heavenly in the Father. name of Jesus, Heavenly Father. I accept Jesus into my life this afternoon. I accept Jesus into my life this afternoon. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord, Lord, and, Savior. Lord and Savior. I ask him to forgive me all my sins. I ask him to forgive me all my sins. And to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. 
and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Jesus, I believe you are Lord. Jesus, I believe you are Lord. In my heart. In my heart. And I confess with my mouth this afternoon that God raised you from the dead. And I confess with my mouth this afternoon. And I declare I am saved. And I declare that I am saved. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. And giving me eternal life. And give me eternal life. I rejoice. I rejoice. That I'm a member of the kingdom of God. That I'm a member of the kingdom of God. And I'm a candidate for heaven. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm a candidate for heaven. In Hallelujah. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory amen. to God. All right. We welcome you. Bible says there is celebration in heaven over one sinner that repents. So whoever you are, if you've taken that decision for the first time today or you're dedicating eradic your life, I rejoice with you. Number two, I want to pray for people here. You've been born again for a while. You've heard about people speaking in tongues. You have about the Holy Spirit, but you have not enjoyed that privilege. It is your right. It belongs to you. If you look at that scripture in Acts chapter 2, when Peter started preaching, he said that the, the, the promise of the Holy Spirit is for you and to your children's children and to all those who are afar off, to as many as the Lord our God will call. So he was talking to the people in front of him and telling them who the Holy Spirit is, that they were not drunk. What they were saying is utterances that was given by the Holy Spirit and they don't understand it. It's supernatural. It's one of the ways the help of God comes. So I want to pray with you right now. If you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit, it's important for every believer to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the initial sign is speaking in tongues. Amen. Holy Spirit is not speaking in tongues. But when you are full of him, the initial sign is that ability to speak in tongues. In the Old Testament, nobody could speak in tongues. It only happened in the New Testament. Why? Because it was reserved for people who are now alive in Christ. Hallelujah. It started mm -hmm. with Jesus. Jesus went to be baptized and he came out of the water. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came upon him and he heard a voice. This is my beloved son in whom I well please. Amen. So mm -hmm. the ability of God comes into your life at a greater measure when you are filled with his spirit. Amen. Amen. And you know, the Holy Spirit is our helper. So imagine you are now so full and conscious of the help of God. Oh, Father, we give you praise. So I just want you to put your hand on your head. If you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm going to pray for you. You know, that John 14, 26 says, the Holy Spirit, the helper, whom the Father will send in my name. So we are going to ask the Father in the name of just to baptize you. It's happened in our, in, in our youth church over the fall during this COVID, we prayed and some people go filled with the Holy Spirit and they testify. So distance is not an issue in the realm of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here. It's also in your house, wherever you are right now. I just want you to believe God. And immediately I pray for you, I start speaking in other tongues. I want you to open your mouth. You will not know what you are going to say, but the Holy Spirit inside will give you the utterance. You just open your mouth and speak. It will, it will, it will look like gibberish. It will sound funny, but... That is the power of God. Amen. That is the mystery. The Bible says you are speaking unto God, not to man. Mysteries. Amen. So let's, let's just, or just raise up your hand wherever you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, we receive your word. John 14, 26 says, the Holy Spirit, the helper, whom the Father will send in my name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you baptize every one of us on this call this afternoon with the Holy Spirit, with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues as it happened on the day of Pentecost and as it's still happening in the body of Christ till today. Father, in Jesus' name, baptize us afresh. People that have never been filled before, Lord, fill them with the Holy Spirit right now, in Jesus' name. As they open their mouth, let them begin to speak as the Holy Spirit gives them utterance. Let's begin to pray in the Spirit. Release yourself. Just yield to God. Release yourself. Release yourself. You can unmute yourself. You can speak in tongues. Just unmute yourself. Let's help them. Just yield your tongue. Just yield your tongue to the Holy Ghost. Yield your tongue to Him right now. He's giving you the utterance. So you need to do the speaking. Speak whatever He puts in. It may be one syllable. It may sound funny. Just yield to Him. That is the mystery. You cannot control how God is going to help you. 
You just need to yield to him. Rada baba sopro tegele bosa. Brele vedege soto rila baba vagala brele suta. Begin to speak right now. Begin to speak. Rele kos. Raba sete brele vegusta. Manga la ba sete boroshi la galia bradia. Lord, fill them with the Holy Spirit right now. La kele bosa sute brele baga sute. Be filled in Jesus' name. Out of your belly. Flow rivers of living water. The help of God is coming on you right now. Open your mouth, begin to speak in tongues. Begin to speak in tongues. Receive the power of God. And fresh on your life right now. The help of God on your inside like never before. Father, we give you thanks. Father, we give you thanks. We give you, thanks. We give you praise because your word is true. Thank you for bringing your word to pass again. As we ask you, according to John chapter 14 and verse 26, you said, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name. We have asked the Father in the name of Jesus, and we thank you. We believe that you have baptized us afresh. And for the first time, people that have never been filled with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. Lord, I pray that this experience will take them to greater heights and deeper depths in the things of God. They will never remain the same. Oh, they will enjoy the help of God 24-7, richly, in every area of life, in Jesus' name. Father, we just give Amen. you praise. We thank you for this convention that has given us this platform and opportunity to enjoy and fellowship with you. And with your spirit. Lord, I send them forth for the rest of this year and for the rest of their life to go forth in the power of the Holy Ghost and begin to excel and to begin to prosper and to do exploits in the mighty name of Jesus. Help them to stand out in their generation. Father, we just give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Awesome. Awesome. Amen. Have you been blessed this evening? Glory to God. Definitely. I want to let you know the recording of this session. I, I believe our host and the IT guys are going to send it to us. Listen to this over and over again. You know, Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you never can be tired of hearing God's word. It's always fresh. I have some messages that I've been listening to for 20 years. Whenever I listen to it, I hear sometimes, wow, did you say that? And I, No, it's because that's the level of revelation that I've gotten to, and God is showing it to me. Amen. Right now, I know I've kind of short over time, but I want to give us five minutes. If anybody has any question about the help of God, or about the Holy Spirit being our helper, or about being filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, go ahead, unmute yourself. Let the question flow. I'm ready to answer by the help of God. Hallelujah. Anybody like that? Or find a way to get my number. I can give it to you. 706-351-2978. Again, 706-351-2978. If you have any question, you can text me and let me know who you are from which of the branches. Also, I have some e-books I could send to you that can help you further your knowledge in this area, because it is your right as a believer to enjoy God's help. The Holy Spirit is the help, amen. And it's available to you, the help is available to you 24 seven. Hallelujah, glory to God. Any question real quick before they bounce me off of this? I'm just- I have enjoying. one question. Go, go ahead, please, thank you. So, okay, so if, when we ask God for help, do we like, like sit and do nothing or do we actually like, do something and then leave the rest to God. Like, yeah, when you ask God for help, you keep doing what you are doing. Like, okay, let's say I, 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 I ask God for help to get a scholarship. I have to apply mm -hmm. for scholarship. I have to do interviews. Amen. But just know that mm -hmm. the help that of God is available to you by faith. Mm -hmm. How the help is going to manifest, you don't know. Because if you say, okay, is, is this scholarship to this area that I want? I don't want any other. What if God's help is to get a scholarship that's even better than that one? You will have missed out. So when you ask God for help, believe in his ability and expect the help to show up. How and when and in what format or in what way, you may not know. 
but you are just thanking God and you are confessing to yourself, thank you, Father God, for your help in this situation. Thank you, Father God, you are helping me in this situation. And keep doing what you are doing. It might just be an idea that will drop in your heart or a different way to do what you've always done. That might be the way the help will come. Remember, Daniel never knew that the help that God would provide for him was locking the mouth of the lion. God could have prevented him from even being thrown into that day. God could have made a way for that law to be changed. But that was not how God wanted to help. The same way, Jonah went into the belly of the fish. Some fishermen could have caught that whale at that time. And then Jonah would be found in the whale, probably still breathing a little bit. <laughs> you know. But God told the whale to go spew him out. And the whale went straight to the island of where God sent him originally. Isn't that supernatural? Amen. So the help of God is supernatural. So don't limit him to natural things. Keep doing what you know to do while you are expecting the help to show up. Amen. Did that help you? Yes, thank you. That's Any other question? Hallelujah. Any question, please? Any question? All right. All right. All right. I've really had a great time sharing God's word with you. And uh, looking forward to see you at the next convention by God's grace. So keep living for God. Keep enjoying God. And please, uh, the service continue on YouTube after this session. We we're only giving an hour, but we were kind of run over it because we did fun time and games, which I felt was appropriate for our service to flow. Amen. And since you all do have a, any question, uh, I'll try and bring the meeting to a close. And if favor, if you don't mind to share the grace with us. And then we'll okay. All right. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Wow. So, guys, have a wonderful rest of the day. Be blessed. So, uh, shift onto the YouTube to continue the service. Brother uh, Falabi, do we have any other thing to do? Brother Dewey, will anyone be on the phone? If not, I'm going to dismiss my people. Uh, yeah, you can dismiss. All right. I just want to thank you, Esther, AY, Nathaniel, Bless Nadedo, Manifestos, Statutu, uh, Favor, Timmy, Olua, Nifemi, Odetui, uh, Deji, and Tutu. Thank you, Eden. Oh, awesome to have you on the